Well, in the late 90s, I was working for Médecins Sans Frontières, Doctors Without Borders. And this was at a time where the medication for the treatment of HIV and AIDS had become available in high-income countries. But millions of people were infected with HIV in the developing world. Um, many of the MSF projects were confronted with patients who, um, who were dying. And of course, the, the physicians and the nurses that were working in those projects knew very well that if they were working in London or Paris or San Francisco, they would be able to treat these people and keep these people alive with antiretroviral drugs. So we started to explore whether we could start treatment projects in, uh, in the African region, for example, but the price of the medicines was absolutely out of control. Uh, an annual treatment cost for the medicines alone at the time was between $10,000 and $15,000 per patient, which of course made it impossible to even start to think about it. And that, that was the situation. Also policymakers, there was a sort of paralysis that made that no one did anything. So what we started to do was try to understand why is this so? Why are these prices so high? And what we discovered was that the products were actually very, very cheap to make. You could make them for twenty, thirty, fifty dollars, depending a little bit on the combination. And that the only reason why the price was so high was because the Western companies had the monopoly. They owned the patents on these different compounds and they dictated in a way who got access and who did not. So there was in fact, the world was in a state of me what people termed medical apartheid, where rich people had access and poor people did not. What we used to say was the diseases in the south and the drugs were in the north. So once you realize that this is a cr created situation, it isn't something it, that also then that also means that you can uh, you can tackle it, you can you can solve it. So. Um, I had a team of lawyers and pharmacists and medical people um, that um, started to work on advocacy to change the rules of the game because that's what was necessary. Um, and that is, that is in a way how I got involved in the, in the access to medicines campaigning because everything we learned through HIV and AIDS was of course also applicable to, um, to other diseases and to other other medicines. Today uh, we're looking at medicines prices, look at new cancer medications for example or the new medications for the treatment of hepatitis C. They're priced at a very very high level. The reason why that is is exactly the same as the ones that we were analyzing in the late 90s. The companies own the intellectual property, they own the patents on these medicines and they get to dictate who gets them and who, uh, who doesn't. Um, so that's the short answer. Well, I think it's very important to not accept the status quo. To not say, oh, we can't do anything because the price of these medicines is so high. You always need to question, you need to understand why it is and question it and, and look for solutions. You cannot allow a situation where you have an effective medicine and you have people who need access to the medicine and they don't get the medicine because of price considerations only. That is unacceptable. People have a right to access to proven effective essential medicines and physicians and policy makers and governments therefore have a duty to make sure that people have access to those, uh, to those medicines. It's also important to engage with pharmaceutical companies. Some may be willing to, to move, to do something. We've seen that with HIV. At some point, the pharmaceutical companies that owned the patents agreed to license these patents to the medicines patent pool. That was an idea that has been around for a few decades. Um, in the beginning, it was considered an absolute ridiculous idea. The companies will never do that. Today we're in a situation where all WHO recommended medicines for the treatment of HIV and AIDS are licensed to the medicines patent pool and that means that generic corporations can produce these medicines uh, practically at cost price. So uh, my core message would be never take no for an answer and educate yourself 
about the reasons why medicines are so uh, are so pricey, and a very good start is a a, a website with uh, which sort of gives you a crash course of uh, of patents and and uh, and medicines. www.accesstomedicines.org. So I would recommend um, anyone who's watching this to go there and have a look.